Uh, how are you, my friend? Good to have you back. I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, let me ask you this. So I've talked to you a lot about the deep state. We, we talked about Russia. We now – everything that happened was under Obama's watch. It seems now we're in the office of the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch. Uh, Biden and Obama, we know there were Oval Office meetings about it. Then the economy, then foreign policy. Uh, how do they win when we compare and contrast the records of Trump to the record of Obama and Biden? Well, let me say, first of all, I do hope that both uh, Senator Lindsey Graham – and Attorney General Barr are going to follow the lines you're outlining. And I hope that over the next year we're going to learn a great deal more about how really sick the system was, how close we were to a coup d'etat, uh, and how far they went uh, to protect Hillary Clinton, who was clearly engaged in, in behaviors that were felonies. But having said that, uh, I think the challenge that you and I face, and, and I say this from uh, being out here, I'm talking to you from, from Los Angeles today and talking to people all over Southern California, we represent the party that thinks that facts matter. They represent a party of pure emotion. And so their, their hope is that they can somehow, you know, cry at the right moment and illustrate the passion and depth of their sincerity so that we will then overlook the fact that they're crazy. Uh, and I think that that's, that that's the heart of their appeal. It's not a fact. And I think that's why we sometimes have debates where, where you have two totally different languages. We use the language of fact. Uh, they use the language of emotion. Uh, because it's all emotion and facts don't matter, they can lie enthusiastically. Uh, so you, you hear, I mean, some of the things Biden has said, for example, are, are so disgusting and so destructive. And, but he says them while saying, you know, we need to really come together. And then he says three or four really divisive things in a row as part of his idea of how we come together. You look at the nutty positions that all of these candidates are taking, right? Um, a lot of it is, and I think you're right, emotionally, people can be sold. Well, if you're going to take care of my child's uh, uh, daycare and you're going to send my kid to nursery school and we're going to have kindergarten through the end of college and I'm going to get a, a guaranteed job, I'm going to get a guaranteed vacation from the government, guaranteed healthy food from the government, and, you know, I, I mean, whether I'm willing or unwilling to work, Every person has the natural stress in their lives of prov providing and working and producing. It, it, to me, you're literally ripping the guts out of somebody's, somebody's natural talents that will never come to fruition because they won't feel the stress and pressure that it makes us great. It makes us Look, dig I, in I, deep. But I think part of the problem we have and you and I have known each other for many, many years, and we've both been deeply concerned about this, conservatives don't have the guts to be as emotionally intense as liverals. I mean, I'm, an, I'm going to stay, I'll give you an example. I'm going to stay right now. I'm in Los Angeles. 60,000 people are, are on the streets. Now, that should be totally unacceptable, and yet that's what the giant government of California has produced. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's hometown. I did research over the weekend, and it helps explain how nutty Pelosi is. You realize in, in San Francisco, <clears throat> if you walk your dog without a pooper scooper, there's a $320 fine. But if you defecate on the street, it's okay. So if you're walking your dog and you forget your pooper scooper and the police walk up and you're next to a, a bunch of poop, you're supposed to say, oh, I did it. It's not my dog. I did it. And suddenly that's okay. This explains half of the insanity of this party. Mr. Speaker, uh, I sent my cameras twice to Pelosi's district. Literally outside her walled-in, gated community of really wealthy Silicon Valley folks, and, and she's worth tens and tens of millions of dollars, one mile, less than a mile from there, and on the other side of town, less than a mile from her office, we have shown needles everywhere. We have shown human feces all over the streets. We, we, the conditions are squalor. And I said, well, I know liberals are only generous with other people's money, but... Can't she say, I'm going to give a million, knock on the door of every neighbor, can you give me a million? These people are loaded. And why don't we build right. a homeless shelter that provides counseling, you know, a few hot meals and a shower for people? Let's start with that. Yeah, but, but, well, but I also think we ought to say to people, you know, just understand <clears throat> the Pelosi Democrats want to do for you what they've done for the poor in San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> think, That's a great point. Or Los Angeles. 
how, why are all of these states, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, and, and California, why are they losing so much population in Texas and, and Tennessee and Florida and the Carolinas? Why are they gaining so much population? Right. And I think that's what we have to drive home. And then, frankly, the other place where we've got to be just tougher, it really hit me. I had a speech last night with about 800 people at the Republican Jewish Coalition. And as we were talking about what's going on, it occurred to me, you know, we, we, we need to say anti-Semitism is evil. Anti-Semitism led to the Holocaust. Anybody in the Congress who's anti-Semitic should be stripped of all of their committee assignments because what they're advocating is genuinely evil. It's not just bad. It's not just wrong. It's evil. They don't have the courage to do it. To go. They're never going to do it. No, but that, but that ought to be the standard that we and the country set. And then if they want to say, no, we'd rather protect evil, let's be clear where the Democrats are at. I mean, if they want to protect evil, that's their prerogative. But I don't think they can sustain that in most of the country. I don't think, look, the, the question then becomes, this is going, going to be, regardless of who the Democrats pick, this is going to be a classic choice election. Two very yep. different competing visions for the future. Now, I could see people saying, well, if you guarantee me health care, well, how to keep your doctor plan and save money work out, but I'm, you're going to guarantee me Medicare for all. You're going to guarantee education through college, starting with that uh, daycare. You're going to guarantee me a job, guarantee me healthy food, guarantee me all of this. And when you ask these people how they're going to pay for it, they can't answer because the Medicare for all part of it would take up 90 percent of the budget in the 10 years you're going to do it. But I think I think we should campaign on having the country choose between winners and whiners. If you want to be a winner, if you want a chance at a better future, if you think you can do better than some bureaucrat controlling your life, you ought to be with us. But if you approach life whining all day, every day, if you, you think uh, going to the Soviet Union for a honeymoon and uh, really loving Joe Stalin is a, is a cool thing, you ought to be for them. So he should, he, he shouldn't run just because of the fact he looked naked in that picture. I'm like, oh, gosh, what is he doing? <laughs> what are they doing over there? All right, quick break. We'll come back more with Newt Gingrich. All right, we continue with former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. His new book, Collusion, by the way, it's on Hannity.com, Amazon.com, bookstores everywhere. You know, you, all this talk about Russia, you know how we would bring Putin, the hostile actor that he is, and Russia, the hostile regime, to their knees? It's called energy. Wow. Remember, you you had yep. a campaign. Uh, what was the campaign called? Pay less. I think, I, think, I think it's fair. No, I think it's fair to say we had a campaign. We did. Because you drove it to a, a national importance. It was drill here, drill now, pay less. Right. And Obama per attacked me personally and said this is terrible demagoguery because I wrote a book called Gasoline Two Fifty a Gallon. Yeah. He said that's impossible. You know, we have peak oil. You'll never do this. I kept saying there's this thing called fracking. Uh, but again, they are the party of emotional sentiment with zero knowledge. I think they literally didn't believe that it was possible to generate you know, fracking in, in North Dakota alone, jumped their proven reserves from $800 million to $24 billion. Mm -hmm. In North Dakota alone, we're now the right. dominant energy producer in the world. First time in 75 energy. years, we're energy independent. We don't have to beg those countries that hate us for anything, and a right. net exporter of energy the, the, the challenge for me is how do we get it to Western Europe, Asia, cheaper than Putin? We, we, think, right. we solve that problem. Putin is on his knees. Russia's done, as we know it. That's right, and that's why we actually have a big program on liquefied natural gas doing precisely that and offering an alternative to relying on the Russians. But I also think we want to say to the average American, you want to live in a country that is the dominant energy producer in the world, that creates jobs in the energy field, lowers the cost of energy in the U.S. It's eight times as expensive to use natural gas for manufacturing in Tokyo as it is in the United States. Now, you like the jobs in Ohio, and by the way, Ohioans get this. Ohio has gone from being a marginal state to being a solid Trump state because they're seeing how many jobs are coming into Ohio. These are high-paying career jobs. Truck drivers in the oil and natural gas industry are being trained starting at 80 grand, 90 grand a year, and all the overtime you can get. And if we mainstream that in this country, we will see a rising tide and 
the literally Sean, lifting to a, people to a brand Sean, new level of wealth and happiness. Sean, do you realize what a vicious thing you're saying? I'm a horrible they person. Need, they, they, they won't need food stamps. Okay. Now, now how can, they, they won't well, need public housing. They won't be on Medicaid. And they'll I take mean, vacations and buy a house and send their kids to the school they dream of. Right. Yeah, that would be cool right. for everybody, so, wouldn't it? So, so, so if you're a liberal, think about how horrifying this is. I got to go, though. I get, you're right. We need it. All right. The book is called Collusion. Mr. Speaker, thank you.